on a bright and promising morning over two decades ago my classmates and i were studying for the agricultural science paper of our west african senior secondary school certificate examinations which was to hold later that day because it was an afternoon paper we had sufficient time to study and were in high spirits as we happily numbered our final days in secondary school occasionally we would drift from studying to throwing shades and exchanging banters with each other this continued until the exchange was cornered by two of our friends for the purpose of this book let's call those two friends shagun and and came how did such an animated conversation between friends quickly metamorphose into a full-blown fight this is the question i keep asking myself till today in just a few seconds, Shagun, the store dear of the two, was on top of Nkem, hitting him hard from every corner as all attempts to separate them failed. It was a bloody fight. Soon enough, Nkem was able to escape his assailant's grasp as he ran down the stairs in search of a weapon. Of course, Shagun pursued after him. As soon as Nkem found a plank, he charged towards his enemy like a wounded soldier. He managed to hit Shagun on the shoulder, but only succeeded in splitting the plank in two. Out of anger and frustration at his truncated efforts, Nkem turned off in the opposite direction, leaving Shagun pursuing after him again. This time, Nkem came back armed with a knife. It was obvious that this was not what Shagun bargained for, so he fled for dear life in the process rammed into the telephone pole connected to the principal's office causing a disconnection by now they were definitely in trouble by this time a crowd had gathered to watch my friends make a spectacle out of themselves immediately we took to our heels so as not to be associated with the rookos needless to say those two were unable to partake in the examination that afternoon because of the aftermath of their indiscretions Inevitably, they could not graduate with a class. Now, was the fighting worth the trouble? Perhaps, if they had learned how to manage their emotions, the events of that day would not have degenerated into a fight. The more they insulted each other, the more they tried to outdo each other. None of them was willing to be placated. Rather, they foiled each other's anger until they came to blows. I wish they had read a book like this one. They would have learned to control and lead their emotions in the direction they wanted it to go. This book in no way seeks to disregard or erase your right to feel or act out your emotions. Rather, it seeks to assist you in working your emotions to your advantage as you journey through life. It is my desire that after listening to this book or reading this book, you will learn to work the magic of emotional intelligence as you encounter life's challenges. It may not be easy, but you can be assured of victory if you make the choice to be the master over your emotions. Welcome to the book Vivre of the Magic of Emotional Intelligence. How champions apply emotional intelligence to achieve peak performance and advancement in life. Written by the world-class performance strategist Abiola Champ Salami. You'll be witnessing the experience of both high-profile and fast-rising individuals in academia, business and governance. They share their experience about the book written by the world-class performance strategist Abiola Champ Salami. Let us begin with the reviews. The foreword for the book was written by a retired high-ranking official of the U.S. Army and Harvard professor, Professor Dana H. Bourne. The book was reviewed by the legendary professor Pat Utomi, founder Center for Values in Leadership, 
Dr. Indidi Unweli, Managing Partner, Sahel Consulting, Agricultural and Nutritional Limited, and Mr. Austin Avuru, Co-Founder, Seplat Petroleum. Let us hear what they have to say. Emotional Intelligence, EI, is becoming the single most important human and social capacity currency for learning and leading. The magic of emotional intelligence, how champions apply emotional intelligence to achieve peak performance and advancement in life, offers us the why and how formula for ultimate success in life, love and leadership. The opening story captures the head and heart it sets the reader on a course of actions on dealing with your mind. The thoughts, actions, habits, character, and destiny cycle starts there. I like the fact that part two on negative emotions comes before part three on positive emotions. Transforming hatred and anger into love for self and others is very convicting and also compelling then by voting to the positive. The quotes to kick off each chapter are rich, reflective and refreshing. Abiola writes with personal and professional humility and authority. He continues to inspire people everywhere to rock their worlds like champions. He does that for me and many. A blessing he shares genuinely and generously even through his book. Let us read, be, and see the magic. Professor Dana H. Bourne. Wisdom travels further when it's domesticated. Emotional intelligence may sound esoteric when Daniel Goldman reports the story of a New York bus driver. But when a young Nigerian high school student witnesses a fight that damages future prospects, the path is opened for domesticating the relationship between phenomena that today draws from psychology, neuroscience, and philosophy. The Champ connects the reader to recognizing the power of emotional intelligence in leading, problem-solving, and organizational effectiveness. Abiola Champ Salami draws deep insight from experience to help us understand why IQ is not enough. EI or EQ is what lets you be a true champ and this book helps the leader wannabe set forth at dawn. Quite a wordy read, stripped of the technical jargon that the great experts inflict on those not as schooled as themselves. Professor Pat Utomi, founder, Center for Values in Leadership. Given that we encounter diverse individuals and groups in personal and professional settings, the magic of emotional intelligence, how champions apply emotional intelligence to achieve peak performance and advancement in life, reinforces the subject of emotional intelligence and the necessity to apply it in our actions, decisions, and relationships. Segmented into four parts, the author, Abiola Salami, builds on the need for individuals to develop an understanding of themselves, recognize and address negative emotions, identify and cultivate positive emotions, and apply emotional intelligence at work and in life situations. According to the author, the magic of emotional intelligence is the power of individuals to control emotions and decide how to react in various work and life challenges. In the book, the author weaves inspirational quotes and personal narratives into characters that seek to enhance the understanding of readers on common emotions and their influence on actions and reactions. Additionally, the book offers practical strategies for managing and cultivating negative and positive emotions respectively, to aid individuals guide their reactions to situations and manage relationships effectively. 
In utilizing the magic of emotional intelligence, readers are persuaded to employ tactful approaches in their responses to work and life situations and in personal and professional relationships. Indidi Nweli, MFR, Managing Partner, Sahel Consulting Agricultural and Nutrition Limited. This is a great work in unraveling the intricate web of human psychology and the huge daily impact of its application on life and living. Emotional intelligence, that ability to monitor emotions, discriminate among them and use the information to guide one's thinking and actions, can make all the difference in developing and managing our character traits and ultimately in how we perceive and live life. Understanding both positive and negative emotions and knowing how that these emotions should not control us are the fundamental ingredients for achieving a controlled, stable, happy and enviable lifestyle. The magic of emotional intelligence, how champions apply emotional intelligence to achieve peak performance and advancement in life, is a veritable companion and reference material to everyone whose daily routine involves dealing with people. As the author correctly predicts, in dealing with people, we are not dealing with creatures of logic, but with creatures of feelings. Austin Avuru, co-founder and non-executive director, Seplat Petroleum. The Testimonials In October 2021, the world-class performance strategist hosted some incredible personalities to the unveiling of this powerful book. Let us pay attention to what they said about the book. Uh, it's really uh, an honor, truly a privilege uh, to be with you this evening and to recognize the work that the champ has been doing. Uh, the Subject area is one that uh, is very dear to my heart. Emotional intelligence is so, so important that leadership failure, which is a major part of our challenge, comes largely from the fact that enough people have not educated themselves to be emotionally intelligent. Because the politicians can't talk to each other intelligently, those fellows don't realize they're doing harm to themselves. But if they had intelligent conversation, maybe everybody will understand how we can all collaborate to increase how we all produce and the happiness of everybody will be increased. We are thankful to the champ and those who are trying to bring this closer home. As, as one who has uh, dealt with managers uh, through the years, um, I know that this is a sore point. A lot of very smart people fail to become good managers because they're not emotionally intelligent. We need to do more to prepare managers uh, to be emotionally intelligent because when they are, they can engage people in a way that will raise their production and all of us will have a happier life. I've been here uh, in Lagos for over two years now. And honestly, one of the, my favorite things to do is to come to events that support our alumni. And as Abiola said, he went to the United States for an exchange program, actually one of our most prestigious exchange programs, the International Visitor Leadership Program or IVLP. And I think you can agree that we made a very good choice when we selected Abiola back in 2015. So really the most important part of the program is not the going to the US part, it's the coming back part. Um, all of our alumni make a promise to us that when they come back, they'll take what they learned and they'll give back to their host communities. And so um, just to round up, we're very, very proud of the good work that Abiola is doing here. And that's uh, your, the presence of all of these wonderful people in the audience today, including some alumni of our other US government exchange programs is really a testament to that. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Abiola, on um, your book launch. Um, I think it was an excellent book. And I think for me, there were many lessons that I learned from the book. And you know, one of them was to be more self-aware, right? Um, the second one was to listen more. 
um, and to ask more questions because sometimes we forget that context, background, knowledge, experience, culture, and perspectives really shape the person across from us, right? Um, it shapes how they respond to what we say, how they even understand what we say. And I think that that's really important. And I think one of the other things it also allowed me to really appreciate was that as a digital leader, where interactions are becoming more and more digital, we also have to think about how our emotional intelligence plays into digital um, interactions, right? And what I've always, um, you know, told my team is that, hello, I hope you're well, thank you, please and kindly go a really long way. Um, and they don't take anything from you. And a lot of people, when they respond to your email, they just write, write you know, sort of the first thing that comes to their head um, without really thinking about, you know, what what they should be writing, right? And what would be polite and how to phrase it in a, in a better way. Um, and I also think that COVID, um, you know, with all the lockdowns really, you know, taught us to be a little bit more emotionally intelligent because it showed us that we should actually ask people, how are you? And not just, you know, let, wait for the occasional, oh, I'm fine, but really dig a little bit deeper and say, how are you? really. Um, and I think that this book is super timely because we really need, um, you know, our leaders across both the public sector, the private sector, as well as the um, civil society organizations to become more emotionally intelligent and to take context um, into perspective and background, um, as well as perspective of the other side. And I think that with a lot more emotional intelligence, we can definitely achieve more unity and more peace in our country. So thank you for writing this book. And I hope that it gets to the right people. I hope that it gets to leadership. It, I hope that it changes mindsets and I hope that it makes people grow the way it has done for me. Thank you so much. Writing me. This um, book and the work of the author is a tremendous act of leadership. It's the type of leadership that we miss amongst the leaders of our country. I always say that the young people of Nigeria believe in Nigeria and its dream. The leaders of Nigeria don't believe in the dream of Nigeria. So I really appreciate what has been done. It's so well written and so clearly written. I'm, I have an 11 year old and I'm really like going to make her read it as well because I think it kind of speaks to different age um, age groups. And the, the clear examples, you know, there's a bit where he talks about and it breaks it down into different chapters of your emotions. So there's pride, there's sadness, there's love, there's shyness. I can be quite shy. So it was really nice to read that passage uh, to the, that chapter. And there was one part that really stood out to me as well was um friendship you know because you don't think about managing friendships you just think of friendships as something that happened but friendships are such an important part of your relationships that you need to manage Abiola, well done you, you really did a, a fantastic job on this Beautiful. book so thank you my young man and I, my 11 year old who is already thinking like an adult already is reading the book wow and he's talking to me about, you know, self-awareness wow. and self-management. Wow. So I'm going to pick extra copies for his friends wow. so that they are on the same wavelength. Wow. Because I remember vividly that there was a young man when we were in secondary school as children. He was terrible. And I know that today he's actually, he's on the same WhatsApp platform with us, but he's, he's, he's been excluded from everything we do because of people's experience with it. He can't communicate, he can't engage, he can't deal. He was a brute, he yeah. was a bully. And I know that before now, strategy most parents want to adopt when their young child is going to school, before they get into school, get them to do judo or karate so that they can hold their own against bullies. But you see, with the magic of emotional intelligence, there can actually be another Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. Thank you, Abiola, for this publication. Awesome. awesome. Being a writer myself, um, the first thing I noticed about the book is the readability of the book. The fonts were appealing. The color of the paper encouraged you to read. He took time to break down his intentions, mm -hmm. explaining um, his perspective in the 
easiest of ways. So reading the book, I saw myself within the lines and I called him up and I said to him, Abiola, you've done a wonderful job. Some, some pages reminded me of me. Some pages reminded me of other circumstances around my life. Um, very well done. I encourage you to keep it up. When, I, when Abiola sent me the book, I was super excited because as I grow in my space, I understand that I need to be more emotionally intelligent. Um, and that's the first thing that you must learn that you, in Nigeria in particular, to survive, you need emotional intelligence because everybody's a boss. You need emotional intelligence when you pull up to a federal SAS official or police checkpoint like I did on my way here. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, even the way that you relate your first word, the way that you park beside them must, ex you know, when I was coming here and I got pulled over by a gentleman, uh, pol gentleman police and, you know, it took a level of emotional intelligence to be able to, I didn't say, I'll give us something. Uh, okay, there you go. That kind of thing. You know, and you need that even at the gate. You're going for an appointment or people who are looking for a job. You get there and the gate man becomes a king or a lord in its own right. You need emotional intelligence. And that's what happened with, uh, you know, uh, Bill uh, when he, they took his father to the hospital. In Nigeria, everybody just wants to terrorize you and just show that they have power. So, but to be able to navigate that, you go to government office, you have your file somewhere and you think that due process is going to help you. Ah, we're not there yet. You need emotional intelligence to be able to drive that. And so I think it's a good job that Debola, uh, Biola has done for all of us. And we're very grateful, Biola Champ, for, for helping us. And we hope that we can get this book to more people. And it's my prayer that you do a smaller version for our people in our public primary school so that they can also be able to eat and begin to grow and understand emotional intelligence. Yeah. The book is brilliant in the sense, very easy read and very practical. And you really can take on board the things that um, Abiola has spent so much time working on and breaking down into very simple layman's terms for everyone to benefit from. But the part that I liked the most about the book was the personal chapter, the one that talks about, you know, emotions. So the things that we all feel because we're all human. Um, so the, the anger, the shame, the guilt, and you know, all of those emotions, it's really important. And I think the first rule of emotional intelligence anyway is self-awareness. And really everything starts from that, because if you're aware of everything, of all your emotions and how they trigger you and how you react to them and how you relate to them, then you can be aware of how those same emotions affect other people yeah. so really it starts with us and I think it was a really brilliant um, segment of the book where he broke it all down and he gave us some really useful tips on how to deal with each other thanks for me it's about self-awareness it helps me a lot a lot because most times there is a tendency for you to be prideful you know except especially for we young people once you've achieved one or two little things, um, you know, there is tendency for you to be prideful. But that book, you know, made me understand the fact that, look, self-awareness puts you in a place, you know, um, that helps you to control your emotions and put things in perspective when you want to probably go out of line. It's, um, it's a great book. Um, the, the, what really caught me in in first few pages was the two school boys that got into the fight and ended up not graduating. I think that was quite because they were at a significant time in their lives. It showed how important it is to control your emotions. Then um, I can pick any one of the emotions. The one I love the most right now is hope. And because I live every day in hope and you can pick any emotion and build it. So you can go to, if you trying to understand what what pleasure means or what um, hope is. You can take it and study it and improve and grow in that sector. I think the first thing was just even the packaging. You know, it was excellent. And, um, you know, Abiola went one step further and, you know, autographed it in front of me as well. And, and you know, I like excellence. I, I like when things are done excellently. And I think generally the book you know, epitomizes excellence. Um, in terms of content, I'm a lawyer. I, I thought I understood listening. You think you listen to reply sometimes, but you need to listen to understand. You need to listen to, to actually get it. 
Um, and I think that's, that's one thing that um, I thought I knew, but the book really um, shed a lot of more light on it. And I'm grateful for that. So thank you, Abiola, once again. God bless you. From the author. Having heard from these incredible people, let us listen to the author of the book everyone is talking about. I present to you the world-class performance strategist, Abiola Champ Salami. In my work as a performance strategist, um, coaching senior executives and consulting with organizations to achieve peak performance since 2012, I discovered a skill gap. The gap that I discovered is on emotional intelligence. While many people use the term because it sounds cool, some other people use it to appraise and describe other people. And some, erroneously, they think it's a tool for deception and manipulation. But only a few top leaders really truly understand and deploy emotional intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, emotions are powerful. They can make or destroy an individual. And anytime we hear someone say, this is business, I can't be emotional. At that very moment, at that very moment, that individual is actually being driven by some kind of emotions. Available research says that one, 61% of professionals admitted that they've let emotions get the better of them at work. 86% of workers said when a colleague doesn't control his or her emotions, it affects their perception of that person's level of professionalism. Three, a study that looked at the failures and successes of 11 United States presidents showed that emotional intelligence was the key quality that distinguished the successful from the unsuccessful. Four, a study shows that no matter how much you earn, if you cannot manage your emotions, you cannot manage your money. So after receiving hundreds of testimonies from organizations, executive entrepreneurs that we've had the privilege to serve across, across classrooms, conference rooms, and boardrooms, our team considered designing a tool that will equip more organizations who haven't experienced CHAMP sessions to achieve peak performance. Based on our conversations, we thought that the tool should deliver the same experience uh, of simplicity, of fun, of inspiration that will be relatable, insightful, and transformation CHAMP sessions are well known for. And this internal conversations was energized by feedback from a friend who reminded me of an incident that happened to us in July 2000 and emotional intelligence saved the day. That incident, ladies and gentlemen, actually changed my life. In the news, since the presentation of the book, a few media houses have published their take on the book. Let us see what a few of them said about the book. The popular performance and life coach Abiola Salami is out with the magic of emotional intelligence book. Salami says talent, IQ, as well as certificate is not enough. He says people need to understand the emotional intelligence, hence the book, as it is a perfect compass to help readers nurture and dispense the right and healthy motion for business affairs. Emotional intelligence is a critical skill that oftentimes we don't pay attention to. Um, a lot of professionals and entrepreneurs don't pay attention to emotional intelligence and because of that it affects their growth in their careers and it affects how their business can blossom. So it restricts how much their business can blossom. Many people continue to rise on the corporate ladder due to their technical skills. But as you continue to grow, it is important to pay attention to the critical skill of emotional intelligence. With emotional intelligence, you can understand the triggers for your emotions and you can manage yourself effectively. You can better make decisions. You can position yourself in such a way that you don't allow negative or positive emotions to push you into making certain decisions. Uh, with emotional intelligence, you can lead your team effectively. With emotional intelligence, you can create synergy with your team. 
With emotional intelligence, you can cultivate empathy, which they seek first to understand before you are understood. Emotional intelligence is that critical skill that will help entrepreneurs to record more profit and will position career professionals on a growth trajectory in their careers and even for other people, politicians, for example, it will help them not just to win elections, you know, but to build legacies that will outlive them. Emotional intelligence is not a tool of manipulation, but one that makes champions out of those that are committed to using their character for the betterment of others. This formed the basis of a book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence, written by life coach and performance strategist Abiola Salami. TVC News correspondent Theophilus Ilama reports. Research evidence suggests that intelligence alone will not explain our achievement at work or in life, and that emotion plays a key role in relationships and organizational success. Emotional intelligence is said to be the ability to identify, assess, express, and manage one's emotions. It's also the ability to understand the emotions of others and to regulate them and promote intellectual growth. This formed part of discussions at the review of this book on emotional intelligence. Panelists here harped on the need for emotional intelligence which they believe is needed for everyday life. The high point of this event was the unveiling of the book Magic of Emotional Intelligence written by performance strategist Abiola Salami. Theophilus Ilama CVC News, Lagos. With the aim to equip wisdom needed to interact better with others and manage emotions, a performance strategist Abiola Salami put together a piece, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence. In his book, which was unveiled on Sunday, Abiola Salami aims to help correct wrong perceptions about their emotions. Professor Pat Utomi, who was present at the book launch, said Nigeria presently suffers from lack of emotional intelligence. The performance strategy said the magic of emotional intelligence is a more sweet for champions who seek to respond, grow and become more productive through work and life challenges. Media Tour Prior to the book presentation, Abiola Champ embarked on a tour of some media houses. Let's enjoy the discussions from these platforms. What is emotional? intelligence. Let's start with what is emotional intelligence. Okay, so emotional intelligence is the capacity of every individual, you and I, um, to one, understand our emotions. Um, two, based on our understanding, we manage our emotions. Mm -hmm. Three, understand the emotions of other people. And based on our understanding of other people's emotions, we build effective, productive relationships with them. The first part is on self-awareness, which is I understanding my emotions mm -hmm. and me understanding the triggers for my emotions. What gets me angry? What makes me sad? What makes me fearful? What also makes me happy? Because it's not just about negative emotions. It's also knowing what triggers us into positive emotions. When we are conscious of this, that we can properly manage ourselves so that we can always say and do the right thing at every point in time. Whether you are under pressure or you are not under pressure, you can always say and do the right thing. I mean, there are many times people will say something and say, you know, I'm sorry, I was under pressure. Yeah. And you might have lost a lot of things just because of what you said mm -hmm. or because of what you did. Um, in the workplace, it cost people promotion, you know, that you said what you were not supposed to say yeah, or you did what you, you were not supposed to at that particular time mm -hmm. to your boss, you know, to a customer, to a colleague. And then someone can be there on the job four years, five years, <laughs> no promotion, but the individual is fasting and praying that the Lord will do it one day. And let me take it from what the lady talked about. She mentioned something about understanding. Mm. And the word for it in emotional intelligence is empathy. Empathy says, seek first to understand before you are understood. Yes. The way to understand people is to pay attention to them, is to be selfless in listening to what the person is saying. Okay. As leaders, as individuals, for us to achieve peace with the people we relate with effect, uh, more effectively for us to even perform well on the job that we are doing. Okay, so tell us now, why did you decide to write a book on emotional intelligence? You see, it's because emotions are powerful. Mm -hmm. Emotions affect nearly all the decisions that we make. The decision to 
um, to get a particular job, right, is emotional. In as much as we say that it's a need for survival, but it's emotional. Yeah. The decision to put your hand in your pocket and bring out your card or bring out your cash to buy anything, it is emotional. Mm. The decision to be friends mm. with particular people is emotional. Almost everything we do, they are driven by our emotions. And it is important for all of us to know that, yes, while, this, uh, while our decisions and our actions are driven by emotions, the critical question is, are the emotions toppling our decisions and our actions, or we are in control of those emotions? And that's why uh, I wrote the book, The Magic of Emotional Intelligence. Do you think that emotional intelligence is more important for the leaders or for the followers? Great question. Um, emotional intelligence is important for every human being. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we focus on leadership uh, because we have expectation from leadership. Um, that expectation is rightly true and leaders, political leaders, business leaders should rise up to the expectation. Mm -hmm. While that is said, it is equally important for the followers, you know, for the team members um, and emerging leaders, which is how I like to describe people who are not yet in leadership positions, uh, for emerging leaders to embrace emotional intelligence. And because it doesn't only reflect when you are leading people or you are responsible for people, it also starts with the way you lead and manage yourself. In fact, someone said that the uh, best form of leadership is not leading other people, but mm -hmm. leading yes, myself. Sir. So there was COVID last year, for example, Leading myself is ensuring that I don't allow anxiety to get the best of me. Mm. Because when anxiety gets the best of me, I'm useless to my family and I'm useless to uh, whichever place that I'm working. I'm not as productive. I won't be as productive as I'm supposed to be. I'll be able to um, meet up with the responsibilities required of me even as a team member. What kind of research did you uh, on, undergo to write this book? Did you do any case studies? Okay, great question. Uh, you probably ob observed that the person that wrote the foreword for the book is a Harvard professor. And we just did not create this book as a regular book. We created it as a, uh, as a transformational resource to help people. So it means the content has to be authentic. It means it has to be evidence-based. It means it needs to have global relevance. It means that you also need to ensure that author's bias doesn't come up in it. And it's not just something inspirational, but a guide, a transformational tool. So the number of examples, the number of research you know, that we conducted locally, Nigeria-based, Africa, and even globally as well. And the reason is such that, uh, not just that the author is sharing his thoughts and his opinion, but it is scientific, it is proven, it is empirical. And not just about my experience, but validated experiences even of other people. So it's an insightful book, it is scientific. It's not just any other book, it's a resource tool. And why, why is emotional intelligence so important in these human-to-human -human relationships? Okay. So it is because all decisions, all our decisions are emotional, right? The decisions to patronize, to buy something, to spend your money is emotional. The decision to be friends with someone is emotional. The decision to be married to the person that you say you love is emotional. Almost all the decisions we make, they are emotional. You will agree with me that this is a great book for any individual and organization who wants to continue to grow towards their maximum potential. Visit www.themagicofeiproject.com to other copies for yourself and for the people most important to your success. So I want to say thank you to everyone, to Professor Patrick Tomi who did us the honors of unveiling the book today. Thank you um, to all the discussants, uh, those who came on site and those who were online. Thank you to everyone of us on site right now that made this great thing happen today. Thank you to everyone online. Thank you very much. Um, in my welcome address, I said that this is a build up to something bigger uh, we are planning for in second quarter of 2022, which is the Global Peak Performance Summit and Awards. And we look forward to further engaging you on the things that we're doing. So go get the book, go sign up for the virtual course. We're here to serve you all the way. And keep following our Viola Champ on all social media platforms. And we'll keep serving you. Until we meet again, remember to keep rocking your world like a champion. Thank you very much.